update today. Welcome back to Azing News, and here is the latest news. United States President Joe Biden announces sanctions for a military coup in Myanmar. President Joe Biden says the United States imposes new sanctions to Myanmar's military leaders for the February 1st military coup in Myanmar. Biden says Washington will identify the first round of targets and impose strong export controls as well as be ready to impose additional measures. Today, I again call on the Burmese military to immediately release the democratic political leaders and activists and they're, they're now detained, including Aung San Suu Kyi, and she is, uh, and also Win Mint, the president. The military must relinquish power it seized and demonstrate respect for the will of the people of Burma, as expressed in their November 8th election. So today, I'm announcing a series of, a series of actions that are, we're taking to begin imposing consequences on the leaders of the coup. The U.S. government is taking steps to prevent the generals from improperly having access to the $1 billion in Burmese government funds held in the United States. And today, I've approved a new executive order, <coughs> excuse me, a new executive order enabling us to immediately sanction the military leaders who directed the coup, their business interests, as well as close family members. We will identify at a first round of targets this week. And we're also going to impose strong exports controls. We're freezing U.S. assets that benefit the Burmese government while maintaining our support for health care, civil society groups, and other areas that benefit the people of Burma directly. And finally, as protests grow, violence against those asserting their democratic rights is unacceptable, and we're going to keep calling it out. The people of Burma are making their vo voices heard, and the world is watching we'll be ready to impose additional measures, and we'll continue to work with our international partners to urge other nations to join us in these efforts. Protesters take to the streets of Myanmar, vowing to keep up demonstrations against COPE, even after a woman was shot and critically wounded during clashes the previous day. A text seen by Reuters shows the United Nations' main human rights body is set to consider a resolution drafted by Britain and the European Union that would condemn the military coup in Myanmar and demand urgent access to the country. China and Russia members of the Human Rights Council with ties to Myanmar's military raised concerns in a public meeting over virtual voting at the Geneva Forum required because of the pandemic. The United Nations Security Council called for the release of the elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi and others detained by the military, but stopped short of condemning the coup. Catholic leader argues Myanmar military release political prisoners move towards democracy. Pope Francis urges Myanmar's military leaders to free political prisoners and resume the country's brusquely interrupted path to democracy. The Pope makes appeal in his annual address to the diplomatic corps as tens of thousands of people join a third day of nationwide demonstrations in Myanmar against the military's removal of elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. In a speech to diplomats from more than 180 countries, Francis spoke of his affection and closeness to the people of Myanmar, which he visited in 2017. These days, my thoughts go in particular to the people of Myanmar, to whom I express my affection and my closeness. The path towards the democracy undertaken in recent years was brusquely interrupted by last week's coup d'etat. This has led to the imprisonment of several political leaders, who I hope will be promptly released as a sign of encouragement for a sincere dialogue aimed at the good of the country. Quale segno di incoraggiamento a un dialogo sincero per il bene del paese. The speech to diplomats is sometimes called his State of the World Address because it takes in conflict and international disputes around the globe. UK with European Union seek United Nations Rights Forum specially session on the Myanmar crisis. 
Britain's envoy says it submitted a request for a special session of the United Nations Human Rights Council to address the crisis in Myanmar where the military seized power a week ago. The United Kingdom would like to inform all colleagues that uh, together with the European Union, we have submitted a request for a special session on the human rights implications of the crisis in Myanmar with the support of 19 additional council members. This is in response to the state of emergency imposed in Myanmar and the arbitrary detention of democratically elected politicians and civil society by the military. This has grave implications for human rights in the country. Police warns protesters to disperse or face to force to stifle the demonstration against the coup and the arrest of civilian leader Song Suu Kyi, Su whose National League for Democracy won the November election. The generals earlier tried to justify their take over the grounds of election fraud and promise a new pool. Ambassador Julian Brettwhite tells an organization meeting of the Geneva Forum that it's made the request together with the European Union. New Zealand suspends ties with Myanmar after the military coup in the country. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says that the government will suspend all high-level political and military contact with Myanmar. New Zealand is suspending all high-level political and military contact with Myanmar. Minister Mahuta has also directed that New Zealand's aid programme to Myanmar should not include projects that are delivered with or benefit the military government. We've also agreed to implement a travel ban to be formalised in the coming week on Myanmar's military leaders. She adds that New Zealand's joined with other countries calling for a special session at the United Nations Human Rights Council on Myanmar regarding to the military coup. In addition, we have joined with other countries calling for a special session at the United Nations Human Rights Council on Myanmar to raise concerns regarding the military coup and the impact on human rights. And I can assure you that New Zealand will continue to monitor closely the situation in Myanmar as it continues to unfold. Arjun says in a news conference that New Zealand will also impose a travel ban on Myanmar's military leaders and ensure its aid program to the country will not include projects that are delivered to it or benefit the military government. Foreign Minister Nanaya Mahuta says in a separate statement that New Zealand does not recognize the legitimacy of the military-led government and call on the military to immediately release all detained political leaders and restore civilian rule. The February 1st coup in Myanmar and detention of elected civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi brought three days of protest across the Southeast Asian country of 53 million people and a growing civil disobedience movement affecting hospitals, schools and government offices. The United States condemns military violence against protesters in Myanmar. The United States condemns violence against demonstrators opposed to the military coup in Myanmar, saying everyone had a right to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. We strongly condemn uh, violence against demonstrators. All individuals in Burma uh, have rights to freedom of expression, association, peaceful assembly, uh, including for the purposes of peaceful protest. We repeat our calls for the military to relinquish power, restore democratically elected government, release those detained, and lift all telecommunication restrictions uh, and to refrain uh, from violence. Police and protesters clash in Myanmar in the most violent day of demonstrations against the February 1st coup, in which generals led by Army Chief Senior General Ming Ohulain overthrew elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. To make this a priority, we are uh, making no bones about where we stand um, when it comes to the military's uh, need to relinquish power. Uh, as you've also heard us say, um, we are undertaking a careful review of um, uh, the uh, assistance that we provide to Burma um, and uh, with an eye towards um, ensuring um, that those responsible for this coup do face uh, significant consequences. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
The clashes led to the first bloodshed since the military takeover and detained Suu Kyi and other politicians from her National League for Democracy, which won a November election in a landslide. At spokesman Price says Myanmar is a priority for Washington and it is reviewed by United States assistance provided to the Southeast Asian country. There are countries uh, in the region that do have uh, uh, an ability, uh, closer um, relationships with uh, some of those um, behind uh, these actions. I wouldn't want to speak uh, for them, but um, I can tell you the international community is attempting every avenue um, uh, to ensure that democracy uh, and civilian leadership uh, is restored uh, in Burma. It's precisely why it has continued to be a refrain um, in the readouts you've seen uh, from this building, uh, from the White House, and why I expect uh, you will hear uh, more about uh, our policy course of action um, uh, in the coming days. We are going to base our conclusions on nothing other than the data, nothing other than the science, um, and based on that, we'll come to a conclusion. Additionally, Price tells reporter that the United States is closely monitoring border disputes between India and China, and Washington supports direct dialogue and a peaceful resolution to the disputes. Cambodia launches first COVID-19 vaccine program for Prime Minister and members of the government. Cambodia launches coronavirus inoculation drive using 600,000 vaccine doses donated by China, with the sons of long-serving Prime Minister Hun Sen and government ministers among the first recipients. The Southeast Asian nation of about 60 million people managed to limit the spread of the disease, reporting just 478 infections and no deaths, although a rare cluster of cases emerged in November. Hun Sen was to take the first dose. At 68 of age, he was above the age to get the vaccine made by the Sinopharm. His sons and health department officials were among the first to get it instead. <laughs> I feel fine and I'm very happy that we received the vaccine today to protect us from the spread of the COVID-19 virus. And on behalf of the Ministry of Health leadership, I express my deep thanks to the Republic of China for the humanitarian donation of these COVID-19 vaccines for us to use. This vaccination helps protect us from infection and also stops the spread of the COVID-19 virus in our Cambodian community. <laughs> Doctors advises a deputy commander of the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces not to eat seafood or drink alcohol after taking the vaccine, urging them to also get shots. China's first consignment of 600,000 doses arrived in Phnom Penh by special airplane, most of them earmarked for health workers and the military. One of Asia's poorest countries, Cambodia, has been an important ally of China in recent years. Beijing will send 1 million doses of the Sinopharm vaccine to Cambodia, sufficient for 500,000 people. Indonesia approves the Sinovac vaccine developed by China for elderly citizens. Indonesia's Food and Drug Control Agency approves the China Sinovac Biotech COVID-19 vaccine for its elderly population. At a press conference, the BPOM announces that it issues an emergency use of authorization for the vaccine. The BPOM says the ages of the older participants are limited to between 60 and 70 years. For those who are above 60 years of age, the time interval between the first dose and the second shot must be four weeks within 0.5 milliliters for each jab. A total of 10 million doses of raw materials for COVID-19 vaccine from the Chinese biopharmaceutical company Sinovac Biotech arrived at the Sukarno-Hatta International Airport in Indonesia's city of Tangerang. There are 28 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine in Indonesia. Among them, 3 million doses are ready for use and another 25 million doses arrived in the form of raw materials for localized production. Indonesia is targeting to administer the COVID-19 vaccine to 181.5 million people until next year. Chilean residents evacuate to a safe place after heavy rains that causes inundation in Jakarta. Floods caused by heavy rainfall triggered evacuations and power outages in some parts of Indonesia's capital city of Jakarta. Households along the city of Chiliwong River particularly affected by the floods.
Kalau gede mah pasti ngungsi. If the flood gets bigger, we will have to take refuge elsewhere. But if it remains this high, then I think we will decide not to evacuate because most of our staff is already on the second floor of our house. Soalnya barang-barang pada di atas. Banjir ini waktu kemarin siaga tiga. The flood was not at this level last year during this time. At alert phase three, phase one being the most serious, but this happened last night at about 3 a.m. and the water level has remained high. Tiga datang lah. Nah, sekitar ini sampai sekarang ini. Local fire department official says that some elderly residents and small children are evacuated from flooded neighborhoods. Kita sudah mengevakuasi sebagian khusus nenek-nenek. We already evacuated the elderly and small children from the flooded areas. So far, we still don't have any information on who else needs to be evacuated. For now, we have checked all neighborhoods that needed evacuations. Belum kita dapatkan, kita lagi penyisiran untuk pengevakuasian. Indonesia frequently suffer floods and landslides, particularly during the rainy season from November to March. Couples in Thailand tie a knot on an elephant for a special Valentine's Day wedding ceremony. Fifty-nine couples in Thailand tied a knot on elephants in a special Valentine's Day wedding ceremony. This is a special day for us, and once you get to do something on this kind of day, This is a special day for us, and once you get to do something on this kind of day, it makes us even happier. Peter was very excited to be signing the marriage license on the elephant's back. I can't explain how excited I am today to come to Nongnuch, to be here in this terrible COVID time, at least we managed to get through COVID. And I'm so excited the day to be at Nong Nooch. It's beautiful. Dancers and band led the procession of elephants and couples, and a local official is also on an elephant, oversaw the signing of a marriage license. Uh, for me, I've been planning for a long time that if I were to sign a marriage license on one day, it must be an extraordinary event. The Elephant Bag Wedding is an annual event at the Nong Nok Tropical Garden, which usually attracts up to 100 couples. But this year, due to the coronavirus pandemic, the numbers are down. Kampun Tan Sacha, the president of the Nong Nok Tropical Garden, says, that due to strict screening protocols for visitors, people are feeling safer and have started to come back to visit the Botanical Park, which showcases recreations of landscape gardens from around the world. Tokyo Tower illuminate in celebration of China's Lunar New Year. The Tokyo Tower of Japan lit up with the Chinese red in celebration of Chinese Lunar New Year. This marks the third consecutive year of the Tokyo Tower to be illuminated on Lunar New Year's Eve. This year's lighting event special is that the Chinese characters of hope are projected on the tower. The event organizer says hope is the common wish for the Chinese and Japanese people as well as people around the world. The Chinese and the Japanese support each other amid the pandemic. The mutual support in each other's fight against the pandemic in this time of difficulty has deeply reflected the strong friendship among the two peoples. China and Japan continue exchanges at various levels, and their economic cooperation has grown amid difficulties. I'm gratified by the improving China-Japan relations.
This year's lighting ceremony not have grand celebration activities with audience because of the pandemic. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga sends a written congratulatory message to the event. In his congratulations, he wishes overseas Chinese in Japan a happy spring festival and thank them for their contribution and support in promoting China-Japan relations. Meanwhile, Tokyo Governor Yuriko Koike also sends a congratulatory message to the event, expressing her belief that the city's Lunar New Year's Eve celebrations would illuminate the road to a better China-Japan friendship as well as world peace. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy by washing your hands, use your mask, and continue to maintain social distancing rule. Bye.